Hi there, Jarrell from Sungrand here, uh, director for Silver Falls. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I hope you don't mind for today's video. I actually have a, uh, a phone with me with all my notes on it. I have a lot of topics to cover today and I <laughs> don't want to end up getting lost. So if you don't mind that, I'll be looking at the phone for a bit. Uh, just wanted to uh, cover a few of the uh, um, glitches that will be fixed on the upcoming Three Down Stars update. Uh, a couple of them are annoying and a couple of them are showstoppers. But uh, sort of the biggest ones I wanted just to make sure um, uh, people uh, know that we've got it covered and uh, the game uh, will see a lot of improvements. So first and foremost, one of the most annoying glitches would be the crate climbing glitch and characters get stuck in free fall uh, sometimes when climbing, climbing objects at, a, at a, a very sharp angle. So that will be fixed. Uh, secondly, um, when you're playing as Annalise uh, in the game for the first time, um, some of her objectives are a little bit vague uh, and so what we've done is we've added some visual clues, um, some more uh, characters uh, with dialogue that help direct the player uh, so that the player understands well, what they're supposed to be doing and it's not spoon feeding the player and things like that but we had um, uh, taken into account some comments uh, from some of our players and uh, we tested the game again and again and we realized, oh wow, okay, um, there are clues that tell a player where to go, but they're so spread far apart uh, throughout the town that it, it's uh, too vague. So we've added some details and some street signs so that it's easier for people to, to understand what they're supposed to do and where they are supposed to be going when they're playing as Annalise. Um, one of the show-stopping glitches um, would be the looping events. Uh, when you play as Moss uh, for the second time uh, after finishing Annalise's section, uh, there are a number of events which can occur uh, that uh, loop endlessly and that makes it uh, either very difficult or impossible to get through the rest of the game, so that is addressed. And we also, for people that happen to, to get their way through all of that stuff, um, there is a glitch where if you try to pick up the rifle in the Sheriff's office, uh, that rifle is required for a story segment. Uh, to progress the game, and uh, the the item you pick up in there is the wrong item. Uh, again, it, when our uh, hard drive crashed with our main project, a lot of data uh, got corrupted, and, and weird stuff happened. You know, collision uh, data for buildings went missing, items uh, turned out wrong, events you know started looping. It was really um, frustrating that. Obviously, we had tested the game dozens of times before sending it through to Nintendo, but in the middle of the uh, uh, submission and approval process, that's when the hard drive crashed in the middle of it, and uh, we were in a position where we couldn't go back and test everything again because we were in the middle of, of everything. So uh, we've gone through the game about a dozen times again and, and fixed up glitches that we found. Um, the indoor lighting uh, for some of the buildings. So what we've discovered is that there's different models of LCD screens for the 3DS. Uh, and some models of the LCD are different technology, and they have substantially uh, darker uh, black levels. So when we developed uh, the game, we tested it, uh, we have two different um, development units that we have, and we tested it on both. And the indoor areas, we wanted them to be quite uh, dark and moody and atmospheric, uh, but they were visible. So on our, our hardware, it looked perfectly fine, um, but what people are reporting is that on their hardware, uh, it's very difficult to see, it's nearly pitch black. So we've adjusted the lighting levels to be quite brighter, uh, so it should be more visible uh, across all uh, uh, models of the 3DS. And uh, also uh, being able to skip through uh, dialogue uh, when people are inspecting the environment. So say you're checking a note on the ground and it has five or six pages. Uh, in the first version of the game you could not uh, progress that you had to wait for it to automatically progress. So what we've done is we've made it to where you can press A or B and you can go ahead and progress that. And that was a, f a fan requested feature. Uh, and uh, one of the major ones again is the camera uh, during battle. So uh, people have uh, made requests, they've sent us their feedback and uh, what's happening is that uh, sometimes when you're in enclosed spaces or when you're next to an object the camera will actually get pushed uh, through the wall. Um, so you go ahead and fix that, it's quite tighter, and if you get too close to a wall the game will actually sort of uh, get closer to what looks like a first person uh, shooter if you're getting you know, next uh, to objects and you're getting closed in in confined spaces. Uh, during, uh, when you're using your melee weapons you may notice the camera sort of swings back a bit so you can see your environment better. Uh, but 
uh, uh, one fan requested feature that we'll be including in a future update, not the one that's coming up. The one that's coming up is uh, version 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, what we're planning for version 1.2, uh, hopefully in two or three months, uh, is that the uh, camera, uh, when enemies are nearby, uh, not just when you're using your melee weapons, but when enemies are nearby and they start attacking you and you're fighting them and you're aiming your, your weapons at them, uh, when you're not aiming, the camera will actually pull back a little bit uh, to, to about the halfway point between standard and using your melee weapons. So that way, uh, when enemies are, are you know attacking you and you're fighting, uh, you can see your environment's a bit better uh, because people uh, have shared their input and saying that it, it, it can get a bit tight when enemies sort of jump behind you and you have to keep uh, looking down to, to see the enemies around you. So we appreciate the feedback on that. We will be adjusting the battle camera a bit more uh, in further updates, but the current update will have a fix for cameras that are sort of uh, behaving unfavorably when you're in tight spaces. Uh, so for uh, moving forward for future updates, if, if people do have requests for features and things like that, please let us know and we'll definitely consider it. Um, what we are including in version 1.2, again coming up in a couple months time, uh, we will be adding a few more environments to explore. There will be a couple more houses to go into so you can learn a bit more about the lore. Uh, you can learn more about characters' lives. Um, these are things that we wanted to include originally in the game, but we had to cut back and say, look, uh, we don't have enough time in development. And for people that have uh, played the game so far, you'll you'll probably, you all, I, I, I guess you'd realize the houses aren't, um, the interiors aren't copy and paste. You don't just stick things in there and say it's a house. Each house belongs to a character uh, in the town and we fill each house with details and lore and history. Uh, and the reason why we had to cut uh, we had we wanted to include more houses, but we had to cut them from development because it takes a lot of time uh, to fully flush out that character and then visually put the details together and then to build it and uh, and to make sure it doesn't feel like a copy paste house. Uh, we want houses to feel like they're lived in, and that players will be rewarded with uh, learning more about the history of the town and the history of this character uh, by exploring that house. Uh, so there will be more of that. Uh, we will be improving the UI a bit. Uh, so for example. When you are adjusting your skill board and you're scrolling through your skill links, currently you have to keep pushing left or right on the D-pad. Uh, so we'll uh, adjust that so you can hold the button, it'll move through pretty quickly. Uh, we'll be adding some new weapons. So the game does have um, quite a bit of uh, sort of elemental uh, paper, scissors, rocks a bit with uh, ice, fire, and electricity. Um, in the story mode of the game, we don't uh, push that onto the player because it's having to think about all that things, all those things um, take away from the story that you would be focusing on and then you start focusing on the mechanics. So f we reserved the elemental uh, triangle for frontier fighters and as you increase in difficulty in frontier fighters, it becomes more and more important because enemy uh, damage output and enemy health increases a lot as difficulty goes up and so uh, it's a good idea to use uh, you know uh, ice weapons deal more damage to fire enemies fire weapons deal more damage to ice enemies etc and uh, there are uh, ammo based weapons that are uh, elemental based and there is also a cattle prod which is electric and there is a torch uh, which is fire uh, and we will be including uh, an ice melee weapon in the future. So currently, uh, ice is the only element that does not have a melee weapon, which means you can only deal ice damage with ammo weapons, which can be a bit unbalanced and a little unfair if you come up against a lot of fire-based enemies. So we will be adding that, uh, and we will be adding new costumes as well. And costumes are not just cosmetic in Silver Falls, they actually have skills uh, embedded uh, in certain costumes. Not every costume, but certain costumes have certain skills attached to them. And certain costumes also have different special attacks uh, attached to them, which uh, have different effects. Uh, some special attacks are better for damage output, uh, better for covering a wide uh, area for hitting multiple enemies, uh, some are good at knockback, and some are good at stunning the enemies so you can go and deal more damage to them while they're stunned. So. Um, it's not just like a damage output, there's more to the special attacks than just that. Uh, we also uh, wanted to cover, yes, yeah, a lot of information here. Uh, we also wanted to discuss our, our upcoming games. So uh, we 
want to cover more topics, but unfortunately, because of, of um, the glitches in, in Three Down Stars, people have been unable to finish the game, which means that we kind of have to uh, bite our tongues a little bit and not discuss uh, all the content in the game, because that would be spoiler territory. We really don't want to ruin that for people. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of content still in Three Down Stars that people have not seen yet because of the glitches. Um, so lately we've just been sort of talking a bit more about our future games, and it may seem like Oh man, you guys are insane. There's too many games here. How are you making all of these games? Um, we only focus on developing one game at a time, so all of our attention for actual development, make sure we put that into one game. But what we do is we sit down and we create a set of games, and we sort of put down as many ideas, and uh, we sort of say, uh, what would be a, a ridiculous, so different that it's ridiculous, just so crazy, or oh man, no genre has ever you know, there's no two genres that have ever come together like this, so we think, let's come up with a bunch of ideas and see if, if they flow and if that makes sense. And what sort of visual aesthetic can we make? If we make a set of games that would all connect to each other with the code link content, which characters would make sense if they headline a certain game? And we would say, well, it'll be interesting because these characters here have certain relationships so we can use them in a different game, but also they have relationships with the main characters in Silver Falls or support characters in Silver Falls 3 Down Stars. So I think, okay, we'll plan six or seven games like that, uh, all starring different characters, but it would be satisfying and rewarding for the player if they take 3 Down Stars and they connect it to another game and they see, oh wow, okay, so characters in 3 Down Stars have relationships uh, or friendships or their enemies with someone in another game and if you use the code link to put those two games together uh, you'll see a bit more uh, story, you'll see some character development and you'll get to see if you've got favorite characters from one game you'll be able to move them into another and you see their story progress so from an episodic standpoint it's a way to see your character, your favorite character's story move forward as opposed to sitting on a character's story and saying we wrapped up their character arc in Three Down Stars and you're not going to see that character again for another six years because we want to make stories with other characters. So we want to avoid doing that. We want to give people a chance to see their characters uh, keep uh, moving forward in terms of story. So that's what the code link system lets us do, and that's why we plan out so many games ahead of time. It may seem insane, because no sane developer would be planning so many games in advance, but it would be unsatisfying, I think, if we only focused on one game, we didn't think about anything else, and then further down the line we thought, uh, let's try and take this new game, let's try and jam it into three down stars and let's see how we can make them fit. We don't want to struggle like that, so we want our games to be able to connect seamlessly and effortlessly, and that it's rewarding for players who sort of comb through three down stars and they try to pick up all the small bits of lore, and when they're able to put the pieces together and say, Oh, holy crap, so these actually, this is the reason this character is this way, these were, were, were what these characters were talking about, and all of a sudden uh, you plug them into another game and everything makes sense, and I think that'll be pretty exciting. Um, so that's something that we think uh, people would pretty enjoy. Boy, there's a lot of information here, I might just go ahead and uh, split this into a, another video as well. So we'll cover some other games uh, in the future, but we did mention Diamond Island. Uh, we didn't go too much into detail, but Diamond Island uh, will be a first-person uh, survival game. Uh, I don't want to discuss the character or the stories too much. I would uh, like people to enjoy the story of Three Down Stars first before we go too much into that. But the gameplay of that will be first-person. Um, you'll start the game with pretty much nothing, but you'll be able to pick up some tools. You'll be able to uh, collect materials like wood, stone, uh, rope, or whatever, and you'll be able to build all sorts of different structures. You'll be able to build uh, using different template pieces you'll be able to build any kind of house that you want or a cabin you'll be able to build furniture different kinds of weapons and things like that so it's an open world survival game it's uh, free roam and you're mostly trapped uh, on an island called Diamond Island uh, and it's tied uh, pretty tightly with within the lore of Silver Falls and it is connected to the story of, of Three Down Stars as well we vaguely just um, mentioned Golden Ridge Ranch which is something that we're not actively programming it and developing it right now, but the conceptual stage for that, the story, the characters, the concept, and the content of the game, that's totally finished, that's totally uh, written out and complete, so that when it is time to develop, uh, we'll be able to develop that very quickly because everything is written out, as is a number of other games that we'll be working on in the future. But Golden Ridge Ranch, 
uh, when we are working on that and when we are ready to reveal more details, uh, uh, we're pretty excited about it. We think people will have a lot of fun with it. But Golden Ridge Ranch will be a farm uh, and ranch simulator, so you'll be raising uh, animals and you'll be raising crops and you'll be building friendships and relationships with the different characters in town and different characters that appear in the background of Three Down Stars and the other games you'll be able to learn more about them um, and and um, become friends with them and um, the main draw with Golden Ridge Ranch uh, actually I don't want to spoil that because that lore is included in Three Down Stars so uh, we'd like for people to sort of explore that and learn a bit about uh, that that potential story on its own um, but Golden Ridge Ranch will not be coming after Diamond Island. We actually have a game uh, that we were working on and we had to put it on hold uh, due to technical reasons and developmental reasons. And it was going to be a 3DS game, but we've hit some limitations and we'd rather not strip down that game and make it something worse than it could have been. Uh, because when, when we were developing it and planning it, it, it was something that we thought could be really great and we didn't want to hold it back. So we've moved that game onto the Switch. Again, we haven't revealed the name or the details of it. And we'd rather just, just wait because we're, we don't want to give people an information overload at this point. And I know we're giving out a lot of information uh, and we also don't want to spoil anything. Um, so this, this game, uh, which is un, unrevealed, will be coming after Diamond Island. Uh, and it will absolutely take into account every single Silver Falls game that's come before it. Every Silver Falls game that's come before it will be able to use the code link system to connect to this untitled game and it will add new story segments and it will add more characters. So that game itself, uh, we're not treating it like, oh, this is disc lock content because I think that's BS and I absolutely hate when games do uh, disc lock content. But this untitled game in the future, it has its own uh, complete full story. It's quite robust. It has a lot of characters in it uh, and that story is self-contained and it makes sense on its own and we don't want to have to, you know, jam other story elements into it to make it bloated and, and scattered and unfocused. So that game tells us a focused story and when you connect other Silver Falls games to that one then you get to again play as your old favorite characters from the previous games and they have new story segments that you get to go through you get to see those characters interact with other characters in town and you get to le get to learn more about the lore of Silver Falls uh, so we'll just quickly recap um, our upcoming games will be Undertakers and that is a retro action adventure uh, with some arcade action in there. It's a bit of an exploration game. Uh, Lucid Nightmare is coming up after that. That'll be a puzzle game. It's got multiple puzzle modes. Um, you can sort of imagine uh, navigating your character around uh, an enclosed area and moving objects around to try and line them up. Uh, and there'll be different uh, modes to that, so it's not just one play style. Uh, we have a 90s style uh, survival horror, so it'll be a bit more horror themed and a bit more bombastic than Three Down Stars and that's going to be Deadly Shadows. Uh, and after that, we have Diamond Island. And again, Diamond Island, we are uh, aiming to develop that for the Switch, um, but people have requested that for the 3DS. So um, we're going to be doing some feasibility studies and we're going to see if we can technically get that to run 3DS itself. So thanks again for sticking with us. Uh, really appreciate that. Thank you so much to everyone that's playing Three Down Stars right now and for patiently waiting for the update. Uh, really, I. I don't know what else to do to thank you other than to just keep trying to create more content for you. Thanks very much, and we'll see you guys in Silver Falls.